Yo, what's up, guys? Let's find some bets. Happy Black Friday. Let's find some plays. So, you know, obviously we have one NFL game, Black Friday game. We got Dolphins-Jets. Should be interesting. The Dolphins, it looks like, you know, are best offered at minus 409 on some random book I've never heard of. And the Jets are best offered at plus 425. So obviously the Dolphins are pretty big favorites, but without further ado, maybe let's look for some prize picks plays. So we can start out on prize picks. They also have a promo. Oh, shoot. They actually have a couple promos. So they're running a promo on Tyreek Hill. Um, does Underdog have any promos for Black Friday? Let's see. So we're logged into Underdog. So they got a promo on Jason Tatum. So let's see if they still let me bet it, even though it says, well, there's only a minute left on this Jason Tatum promo. So we might as well lock this in. I say this all the time, but promos are the easiest, easiest money in the world. So again, like underdog fantasy has, you know, thousands, tens of thousands of lines up. The hard part is zoning in on value, right? What are, what are plays that actually have an edge that actually, you know, have value to the market? Um, so what we can do is we can just pull up this little odds jam fantasy optimizer, go to underdog. And this is just going to scan underdog. Try to point out some value. So where do we want to start, right? We got some different options. So you can see the first play is RJ Barrett over 22 and a half points plus rebounds plus assists. So I also have my little spreadsheet that kind of breaks down the math of underdog fantasy. And this can be the first play we go with. So let's look at prize picks, right? We're always trying to find value in the market. So if you look at prize picks, they have RJ Barrett, you know, a full point higher at 23 and a half. So even if you only use underdog fantasy, Prize Picks is a billion dollar company with a sophisticated model. They're taking all these bets, moving around lines based on where sharp actions coming in. You still want to know like where does where do other books have their line set even if you don't necessarily use them? So what we can do is we can go here. This is called the Odds Jam Sportsbook screen, and this will just kind of show us like okay, where do other books have RJ Barrett's line? So you can see like FanDuel has his line at 23 and a half with the over favored. Kasumo, the line's at 23 and a half with the over favored. Caesars has the line at 22 and a half over favored, right? Minus 145 favorite. So all these books, you know, points bet has the line at 23 and a half. Like these are all, all these books have different models. They're taking different action. So they have slightly different odds, but you know, you can see you have hundreds of data points and, all these things make it clear to us that did they already finish this promo? What the fuck? So we'll go back here. We'll refresh. I mean, the promo may have expired. So if it expired, I mean, that's pretty annoying. They only run them for like 20 minutes, but we'll find some other plays. We already got a good play on underdog. So RJ Barrett over 22 and a half points plus rebounds plus assists. That's the play we'll start with. So again, like the way that underdog fantasy works is they give you the same payout, right? You take a player's over, under, over, under, like it doesn't matter. They have fixed payouts. Um, and on underdog, I'm generally playing three pick entries. They give you a 6x payout. Whereas prize picks for these three pick entries, you know, they're only going to give you a 5x payout. So this type of stuff really matters long term. You know, just kind of like when you go through the math behind underdog fantasy, you'll see that three pick entries are optimal. And we have some videos about that. But anyways, let's zone in on some bets. So let's go back here. Let's try to get an underdog play. And then we'll fire off a prize picks play before the game starts. So we want to go here. I don't want that other stuff. And maybe we can actually start here. So why don't we look at this? So the first play I actually kind of like. This is for Sunday. But, I mean, whatever. Who cares if the game's a few days away, you know, if there's some value? So if, it, if you look at Alvin Kamara. Right. This is the key to beating prize picks, underdog fantasy, you know, using market data, using sportsbook odds. So you're going to see like all these books, you know, it's not just one book. You have Penny Pinnacle, which is known. This is known to be the sharpest bookmaker, the smartest bookmaker. But you have all these books posting odds on Alvin Kamara to score a touchdown or not. ESPN launched a sports book. You know, you got Fliff. All these books have Kamara heavily favored to go under. Right. So again, on prize picks, like they'll give us the same payout if we take Kamara to go over or under. You get a three X payout regardless for for a for a two pick entry. So we want to take his under because that's what the books have heavily favored. You know, we're using market data to our advantage, sportsbook odds. 
And again, all these books have sophisticated models. So I follow a very data-driven approach. I don't just, you know, bet on random shit with my gut. But anyways, let's go back to prize picks and maybe let's find a play for this um, Tyreek Hill promo. So we have, this actually works out decently well. So we have Greg Zer Zerlane under one and a half field goals. I'm honestly not even sure how to pronounce his last name. But Odds Jam is saying, okay, like take the under for this guy. So let's kind of go through this. Where is this play, right? So you can see here, all the books have him heavily favored to go under. So if we go here, right, you can see all the books have his under heavily favored. Right, so let's go here. And then we want to go to field goals. Where is this? Right, so you can see here, all the books have his under heavily favored. It's not just one book. This is just whatever the book I'll pull up. Minus 170 favorite to go under. So again, like even if you don't use Fliff, this is a data point to you. You know, it's a book telling you, hey, he's more likely to go under. He's a lot more likely. So prize picks, again, they give you the same payout. You take him over or under. So we want to take his under. And then actually this pairs nicely with Tim Boyle over half of a passing touchdown, right? These plays pair well together. You know, if, uh, if, if, if Tim Boyle has a passing touchdown, then the Jets, you know, are less likely to be kicking field goals. You know, if the quarterback's going over his passing TDs line, obviously a very low line, Greg Zerline is more likely to go under. You can only score a field goal or a touchdown on each possession. So if he goes over, he's more likely to go under. So these plays, you know, are positively correlated. So it's like, okay, so we now have four picks, um, but the optimal slip type on prize picks so here's another one, Joshua Dobbs, all the books, pinnacle, sharpest bookmaker out there. You can see they've ripped, you know, they've like odds are always moving. Actions coming into the market, like pinnacle is known to be the sharpest book. They're available kind of everywhere in the world. And if all the sharps are hammering Joshua Dobbs is over, they'll move his over to being more favored. Just like if everyone's buying a stock because they think the company is more valuable, the price goes up. It's the same thing in sports. Like this is a market, all these books, and it's not just one book. All these books have Dobbs heavily favored to go over. So what we can do is we can now go here and we can lock in Dobbs and we can take him over 20 and a half passing completions. And this will be our prize picks play for this promo they got going on. Kamara under, Tyreek Hill over, promo play. We got two plays on the Jets and then we got Joshua Dobbs to go over and we'll see how much they let me bet for this promo Oh, your maximum amount is $5. It's absolute bullshit. Hopefully you can get down more. Um, it's just a $5 promo, but whatever. That's what I'll lock in. So again, like if you go through, I have some videos about kind of the math behind prize picks, but again, prize picks has fixed payouts, right? They got a bunch of promos today. Any five flex you make, you're getting the same payout, right? Like 10X, 2X, 0.4X. So all of prize picks boils down, if you go through the math behind prize picks, to can you win above 54.25% of your player props, right? So, for example, if you can win plays like Camara over, under, and again, just here's what I locked in if you want to tail five picks, five pick flex play, is again, like, you know, it all just boils down to can you win these over-unders more than 54.25% of the time. Price picks has fixed payouts, so it all boils down to win rate. You know, if you can win your player props 57% of the time, right, you can win these over-unders 57% of the time, only losing 43%, your ROI on prize picks will be 19.25% long-term. And again, what prize picks is banking on is most people don't have an advantage, right? So if you don't have an edge, you don't have an advantage, you picking over-unders is like you flipping a coin, 50 heads, 50 tails. You're going to be 50% to win, 50% to lose. So if you don't have an edge, you'll win 50% of your player props long-term. You'll lose 50%, no advantage, and your ROI on prize picks will be negative 25%. But you need a real advantage, right? So you look at sportsbook odds. All the books have Joshua Dobbs heavily favored to go over. So it's like finding a coin weighted in your favor. Like all the books are telling you, yo, Dobbs is a lot more likely to go over, which is why this play is winning about 54.25% of the time and is a sharp bet to go with on prize picks. Anyways, so that's what we locked in on prize picks. 
we can see if there's any plays on Fliff we want to lock in. You know, on these live streams, like there are hundreds of sports books out there. I mean, literally, there's you know 215 books on Odds Jam. Um, you know, maybe you, you you use all these books. Like I don't know. Like all these states, the U.S. is so weird. All states have different sports books legal. So maybe you use FanDuel, maybe you don't. Like this looks like good value on FanDuel. Um, but again, like. It, 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 it all depends where you're located. So on these live streams, I try to focus on, you know, the most popular sports books that are available in the most locations like Fliff, whatever. Anyways, there's some other plays we could go with on prize picks. I'm sure there's also some plays on underdog fantasy that we could go with. So like the over here, you can see in the Heat Knicks game. So we can head over here to basketball. I don't really give a shit what I'm betting on. If there's an edge, there's an edge. So let's go over here, you know, Odds GM just scans the market, points out value. Like value is the key to beating the books. Shouldn't be that complicated. So we want to go with over 215 points at plus 130. And this is what we want to lock in. And also their odds don't even make any sense. Like they're giving you better odds on the over 215 as opposed to the over 215 half, which if you think about it, like that doesn't make any sense. Over 215 and a half is less likely to hit because, you know, anyways, you can see like this doesn't make sense. The odds go up and then down. So like, you know, we're just trying to exploit the soft spots on books. This is the easiest way to get an edge to beat the books long term. All these other books have, you know, this line plus 110, plus 118. So getting, you know, plus 130, pretty clear value. Um, another thing to mention is this is the most important calculator in sports betting. It's a no vig calculator, right? So all this does is all books make money by charging a spread, kind of like a stockbroker. You know, I'll buy a stock for 110, I'll sell it for 145. You know, they're setting markets, you know, making money by charging a spread. Books are the same thing. Pinnacle, sharpest book, they have an 18 cent spread in their market, plus 118, minus 136. So what you want to do when you're trying to figure out like, okay, like what should the odds actually be? What is the true odds is you got to remove that spread. You got to remove the VIG. So you use a no VIG odds calculator. So essentially like according to Pinnacle, their market is plus 118 minus 136. They have an 18 cent spread. We want to remove it. So you remove the VIG, the fair line, the fair odds with the VIG removed is plus 125.63. We're getting plus 130, which is above the fair odds, right? You're getting value. You're getting better odds than the true odds or the fair odds with the big removed. So it's like, okay, that's a good play to go with. And again, like there's a bunch of longer videos kind of breaking this down. Oh, here we got a play showing up on underdog. So you, again, like these lines are always moving. Um, like if you go to underdog, they actually have um, NBA alerts for injuries, stuff like this. Like all this crap moves around markets. You know, if Gary P Payton isn't playing, you know, who's going to take his minutes? You know, if some other player is more likely to be taking his minutes, that player is more likely to go over. Like whenever a news comes out, that moves around markets. You know, bam, if he's playing, Jimmy Butler's points line probably has to go down because bam will take part of the scoring load. Whereas if Bam ends up being out, you'll probably see Jimmy Butler's line move higher. And again, all these books set lines independently. So sometimes, hopefully, you know, we're able to, 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 to get in on plays before the books update odds after injuries and stuff like that. But anyways, we have this play on underdog. So let's try to lock it in before the line moves. So we want to take Denny under six rebounds. So again, really the only difference between prize picks and underdog is um, the optimal number of picks. Prize picks is 5x payout for three pick entries. So the next play we have is Troy Franklin under six receptions. So you can see here this play on Denny, right? Uh, where did it go? So let's refresh this. Where did it even go? Here we go. We got it. All the books have his under heavily favored, especially Pinnacle, which is Penny, Pinnacle, they're the same thing which is known to be the sharpest book. Like all these books are data points telling us, hey, he's a lot more likely to go under, right? If he should be favored to go over, all the sharps would have already bet his odds at underdog line. You know, plus 126 is underdog odds, betting 100 to win 126. So if he should be favored to go over, all the sharps would have bet his line at plus 126 until his over was favored. 
You know, these books aren't stupid. Again, they're moving around lines based on where action's coming in, especially where sharp action's coming in. DraftKings knows which of its customers is profit are profitable, and they, you know, they have models that like move their lines based on where action's coming in. So, anyways, what we can do is we can go here. We now have this first play, and we can try to make a little play on underdog fantasy. Kevin Durant under 37 and a half points plus rebounds. So the only thing I'll mention is like you, you know, we try to move quickly. Some of these really good betting opportunities, they're they're not gonna last forever. And underdog fantasy, fucking assholes, limiting my bet size to only $20. Made too much money off them. So that's unfortunate, but that's just kind of how it is. So underdog fantasy limited me to $20 recently, which isn't isn't fun, but just kind of how it is. So one thing to mention is we already have him under in rebounds. We don't want to take Kyle Kuzma under in rebounds as well. You don't want to take two players on the same team, both to go under in rebounds. Somebody has to get rebounds. So on underdog fantasy, three pick entries are good, but I also play a lot of four pick and shirt entries, um, which are roughly the same in terms of the EV. So again, I'm only able to get down 20 bucks. Otherwise, I would have bet more. It's not that I don't like this play or anything like that. Some books have better better betting limits than others. Um, but here's what I ended up locking in on underdog. Four picks. One, two, three, four. Cool. So let's go back here, and then we can look maybe for some more prize picks plays. Again, the market's always moving. Injuries are happening. Sharp action's coming in. Weather is changing for football. New forecasts. So, like, you'll see good betting opportunities show up, you know, all times of the day. Like, um, you know, if a player, if, you know, let's say Jalen Brunson gets injured and Jimmy Butler gets injured, you know, that affects the total for the game, too. You just got rid of two of the best scores in the game. You'll probably see the total move down. And if, and if any books are stale or don't update their odds in sync with the rest of the market, you'll see some good bets. So, anyways... What we can do is we can go back here and maybe lock in one more prize picks play. So you can see there's some other plays with value, right? And it's all the same concept, right? Like you look at James Cook, all the market data points. Like it's not just one. You have dozens of books telling you he's more likely to go under his receptions line. He's more likely to go under. And a lot of people like to look at these last five charts, but they're really not useful, right? Every game is different. Players are injured, lineups are different, weather's different, the opponent's different. It's not that useful. And everything is baked into the market. You know, like if Derek Carr gets injured, that's not reflected in historical data. That's reflected in sportsbook odds, you know, real-time market data. Where do books have their line set? Everything is reflected in the market. So anyways, what we can do is we can go back here to prize picks and we can try to find some stuff. So we can lock in Cook. We don't want Dalvin Cook. We want James Cook. So this is for Sunday. The Eagles got another tough game, damn, against the Bills. So that's the first play we can go with. And then we can go with Dobbs again. Like, you know, we only included him for this little promo play. So maybe it's like, okay, like, let's include him again. That seems good. Prize picks again. S simple strategy. They give you, like... It's very simple. It's all about data. They give you the same damn payout if you take Dobbs to go over or under. You're getting the same 3x payout regardless. So all the sports books have him heavily favored to go over, especially the sharper books like, you know, Pinnacle, whatever. So we want to take his over. So then you got Tim Boyle over. So we can include this play again. I mean, obviously, again, if you only want to include a play once, Whatever, that's fine. So let's go back here to prize picks. Whoa, we got some esports plays showing up. And some of these esports discrepancies get pretty big. Um, so let's go back here. And we want to take Greg Zerline under one and a half field goals. So these plays pair really well together, right? Like if Tim Boyle throws for a touchdown, then the Jets, we know, didn't have a field goal in that possession. So he's more likely to go under. So these plays actually very much so like together. Uh, and then we can take Gafford. What do we want to take? So let's go back here. We already have a play in the Eagles game. I mean, whatever. We can include Kamara again. It's kind of up to you. 
obviously it's really hard like bankroll management on prize picks and you'll see here prize picks you know just kind of part of the game if you're beating prize picks too bad they'll limit your max bet size i can only get down 25 bucks on these five flex plays again fixed payouts everything boils down to win rate added benefit is two of these plays are positively correlated they pair well together so here's what we got so what we can do next is um, look at some of these esports plays. Like holy moly! So you can see here this player, House of Peak. And again, what's amazing about esports is if you think about the NFL, right? There's games like you know one day a week. Um, not actually. There's obviously a game today. But what's great about esports is you have dozens of games every day. So there's a lot of surface area for the books to cover. And you know sometimes they screw up. So if you look here at this player, you know, it's like, what is going on? I mean, this is crazy, right? Like 33, 29 half. You'd think, you know, some book was running a promo or a discount or something like that. Like that's a big discrepancy, 33, 22 half. So what you could also do is you could middle bet this. You could hit the under 33 on underdog, the over 29 and a half on prize picks. If he has 30, 31, 32, you win both plays. If he has 33, you know, you push on underdog and you win on prize picks. So that's called a middle bet. It's kind of like if you could buy a stock for $29.50 on Fidelity, sell it for $33 on E-Trade, make a profit of $350. And again, you got to remember, like, this guy's line is centered. Like, three and a half kills in esports is a ton. His line is centered around 33 He's not going to have zero kills. He's not going to have a thousand. So those, you know, 30 to 33 is kind of the range where he usually falls. That's very impactful, you know, and you can see prize picks already bumped it fucking assholes. So like these good bets, like you got to get on them quickly um, because they'll move quick. And hopefully some people were able to get it down. You can middle bet it. I mean, there's tons of different things you can do with it. So anyways, we can refresh this. This play is going to, you know, go from 29 and a half to 33. Anything else we like? I mean, here's another discrepancy. Uh, so there are some plays KD under 42 and a half points plus rebounds plus assists. So again, you can kind of like make different combinations. So we can go back to prize picks and let's take a quick look before they start to move around lines on us. So we have KD under 42 half. What else? do we want to go with? I mean, we have, again, this play on Greg Zerline pairs very well with Tim Boyle. So those are two plays where if you want to go with a bunch of different plays in this game, uh, these seem pretty good. So we want to go to Boyle and you're kind of just like, you know, I always say you're kind of just like hedging or, um, uh, you know, you're kind of like diversifying your portfolio. If you, you don't just have to include one prize picks play in one slip. If you include it in a couple slips and you don't bet too much on them, it's kind of like diversifying whatever, your portfolio, however you want to think about it. But anyways, we can look at Durant. Uh, it looks like they may have bumped this line. Yeah, you can see they had him at 42 and a half. Odds Jam was recommending the under. They already bumped him down to 41 and a half. So it's just a bit of a, a pain in the butt. So we could take this play on Hussapeak. I mean, 31 and a half. Other books have it 33 and a half, 34. But it just like, it doesn't feel good, you know, because again, we could have gotten this over 29 and a half. I was too slow. So I missed the play. I missed the boat. But whatever, what we can do is take Durant. Uh, they just bumped him from 29 and a half points to 29. So prize picks is starting to wake up. But on the bright side, we do have some more picks in the Knicks game. It's very common where if books screw up one line, we already bet the over 215. And we here we can get the over 213 plus 110. No other book is even offering plus money. And again, the total is constantly moving. Bam may or may not be playing. There's news that's moving around the market, moving around the odds that books are putting out. So we just got this play down. Uh, so we can go back here. You know, Kevin Durant play was already bumped on prize picks. The game obviously starts here in a few minutes. So I don't really feel like taking this play on Hussapeak. They already bumped it. 
So whatever. We can go back here to underdog. And again, like the more books you got, the better. Daniel Gafford under nine and a half. I mean, I kind of bounce around from book to book. You know, sometimes there's good promos on prize picks. Obviously, they had this promo today on Tyreek Hill, reduced um, reduced line, 55 and a half. Sometimes there's better promos on underdog, FanDuel, whatever. Like, again, I recommend having as many bucks as possible. I've used all, basically every sports book there is. Oh, my God. So what we can do, so again, like, this is not surprising. You'll see this parlay play platform. There's a great line on BAM rebounds plus assists. So again, Bam is now probable, but he's a little hurt. So maybe he'll be having he'll have reduced minutes if he ends up playing. And if you look at Bam rebounds plus assists, I mean this plays clear as day. Like this is a fucking no brainer. All like underdog has his line at twelve and a half. Fanduel at twelve and a half. Like all these books have his line at twelve and a half or thirteen and a half. Most of these books have his line at twelve and a half with the under favored, right? Parlay play has his line at 14. So it's like, what are they doing? So what you could do too, is you can middle bet this, right? We could hit the, so let's go to BAM, right? You could hit the over 12 and a half. Again, his line is centered around 12 and a half, 14 ish. So like 12 and a half versus 14, like that's a big difference, but it seems like all these other books have his line at 12 and a half, 13 and a half. Like, it seems like parlay play is just screwing up his line big time. So a lot of opportunity right now on parlay play. So then we can just like look at Malik. So let's go here, right? What's his deal? Points plus rebounds plus assists. So clear value on the under on parlay play for Bam. But if we go to Beasley, all the books have his line at 15 and a half, 16. They're sitting at 14 half, 16 half, right? Caesars has a line at 15 and a half with the over favored. I mean, it doesn't get much more clear than this. Oh, my gosh. So we have Greg Zerline under six kicking points. So let's take a look at this, which is impactful because if they don't score a touchdown, six kicking points is two field goals. But if you look at books, where do they have his line? They have his line at five and a half with the under favored, right? So parlay play has the line at six. Books are at five and a half with the under favored. It's like, okay, like under six seems really good. And again, that's a key number in football for a kicker. That's two field goals if they don't score a touchdown. Uh, so we already have a play on Malik Beasley, so we don't want to take this play on Dame Lillard. Same game. Oh, my God. There are a lot of bets, though. C.J. Stroud, obviously a fan favorite, but under 280 and a half passing yards. So let's just pull this up. So I just kind of like to show the raw data, like, explaining why I'm betting what I'm betting. Um, but if we go here to Stroud, right, all these books, like you literally have hundreds of data points, all these books with sophisticated models, no offense, you're not special. You can't outsmart the rest of the world, the market. You should use market data to your advantage in this super fragmented, super inefficient sports betting market. You know, Pinnacle, first of all, they have his line seven yards lower and they have the under heavily favored, Parlay play, they give you the same payout if you take his over or under. Sharpest bookmaker out there, Pinnacle, has his line seven yards lower, and they have the under heavily favored. Clear as day that we want to be on his under. Tyus Jones over 19 and a half PRAs. So, okay, that's fine with me. So what we can do is we can, you know, there are just a there's a shit ton of plays right now on parlay play. Um, so we have Jalen Brunson under 24 and this play pairs, but you'll actually see like, they're going to give me a reduced payout because I have two unders in the Knicks heat game and this play on Tyus Jones, they're not going to let me play. So I'm just going to, you know, whatever, I'll just kind of keep going. So what we do have is we have Jasper Bratt over two and a half shots on goal. So the optimal slip type, again, like it matters how many picks you're going with. So what we can do is we can go back here. I also don't even have it filtered in. Again, if there's books you want to look at, you just got to, I got to filter it in. Where is it? We got parlay play six pick entry Sabonis under 19 and a half points. Uh, so we have four good picks. I want to hurry up because this game starts in three minutes. 
and then I want to watch the game. So we have Bam, we have Beasley, we have Greg Zerline. So we have three incredible picks. We got Tyreek Hill. Uh, so where do we want to go next? Kyle Kuzma, right? This is in the same game, so we're not going to be able to play it. What do we want to go to? Tua under in passing yards. I don't like that. It doesn't really pair well with this play on Greg Zerline, but it does seem like a halfway decent play. So here we go. We got Miles Turner, NBA play, over 25 and a half PRAs. So I'm just kind of going to fly through this. You know, I would go through each pick, but I mean, you know, trying to move quickly because again, these the best bets, they're not going to last forever. So you have Malkin, all the books you can see have him pretty heavily favored to go over. That's a good play to go with. Andrew Wiggins over 19. All books have him at 19 and a half with his over favored. So it's like, okay, now we have a seven pick parlay, 75X payout. So that's the optimal slip type. And you're going to see they only give me a max of 35 bucks. So maybe you're able to get more, but I don't think so. I think that's pretty flat from book to book. Now, granted, there was some value on some other players like Dame. So what we can do is we can make another slip really quickly. So we want, you know, under, under, right, for Kyler Murray and then for Tua, right, under 255 and a half passing yards. Rest of the market has them around 246. So what we can do is we can take Dame over 12, right, rebounds plus assists. All the books have his line at 12 and a half with the over heavily favored. So again, I couldn't include this in the last play because I included the play on Beasley, but I can now, and I just want, I mean, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this down in time. Uh, so we have Tyus Jones over 19 and a half. Again, they're not going to let us play this because we already have a pick on Dame for this game. What I will be able to play is Jalen Brunson under 24. And I don't think I'm going to be able to get this play on Tua down. So let me just remove it. But here, and again, like the same strategy applies for beating prize picks. The only reason we're talking about parlay play is if that's where the value is, like, what are they doing? All these books, they have the line at 24, prize picks 23 half, all these other books, 22 and a half, you know, whatever. So like, it's pretty clear there's value on the under. So I got rid of that play on, um, on, on Tua and obviously the game just started or is about to start. So what I can do is let's just. Try to finish out this slip, create another little seven pick parlay, and then we'll maybe look at prize picks underdog again. And then I assume people want to watch the game. I want to watch the game. So again, we need plays in a different game. So we already have that play on Miles Turner. Again, it's only 19 buck max bet size. So they're not going to let us play that. Tua, the game just started. Kyle Kuzma, same game. Dennis Schroeder. There we go. We got him over 24 and a half points plus rebounds plus assists. So we need three more picks. And again, is he's German, so it's not going to show up there because they have the little accent. So some of you know the hard part about sports betting is just like learning how to navigate these books. So we have Eklund under in points. We have Matt Gay over in kicking points. And again, like I'm only able to get down 35 bucks on these. So the power really comes from placing a lot of bets right? Like I try not to spend too long. Like I try to place a bunch of bets with an edge every single day. And then I just let the math work itself out. I mean, when you're following data, right? Like long-term you're, you're going to make money. So it's just, damn. So there are a lot of plays. We got Trevor Lawrence under interceptions, right? So again, like parlay play, they're going to give us the same payout if we take Trevor Lawrence to throw an interception or not throw an interception. I follow a very data-driven approach right? Over, under, over, under. If you look at all sports books, right? DraftKings, whatever you want to look at. So if we go here and you go to Fliff and we look at the Jaguars game. So when do they play? Mm. So here we go. They play Sunday at 10 a.m. Right? Anyways, I should lock this in before any lines move. So 75X payout, just kind of throwing out darts. Every play has an edge. I understand these books, their payout structure, what percentage of my picks I need to win inside and out. I understand the strategy inside and out. So it's really just about getting down the volume, placing a bunch of bets with an edge, right? Trevor Lawrence, heavily favored to not throw an interception. 
And then you can see, like, there is some other value. Kenny Pickett, under 200 and a half yards. All the other books have his line around 192. But I don't have enough plays to, 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 to make another seven-pick entry, which is the optimal slip type on this platform. So you can see underdog fantasy. There's some decent value, but in general, the board is pretty dry. Prize picks, board's pretty dry. So, you know, it's kind of like, okay. We'll see if there's anything on Fliff. If not, we can call it a day. I'm sure there's some good bets on, you know, FanDuel, DraftKings, Caesars as well. Again, the more books you have access to, the more books you're using, the better. Looks like the best bet right now is on FanDuel, right? You're getting plus 106, betting 100 to win 106 when these other books have the over favorite. It's kind of like, you know, plus 106 odds is like if you're flipping a coin with a friend where if head shows up, you lose 100. If tail shows up, you win 106. But in this case, the coin is weighted to show up on our side. You know, DraftKings has the over favored. Bet Online, which is a sharp bookmaker known to be a really smart book, very accurate lines available everywhere. They have the over favored, right? So it's like finding a coin weighted to show up on tails and we're betting 100 to win 106. We're getting underdog odds on a favored outcome right? So that's absolutely insane. That would be a great play to go with on FanDuel. There's some bets on Caesars. I mean, all these books can screw up because all books set lines independently. They all have millions of lines up. So it's really just like our job to, you know, whatever, find these sharp bets, find these plays that have a, that have a mathematical edge. So we can go back here to underdog and anything else. Ooh. So, I mean, we do have enough, so let's lock in an underdog play. So we want to take Quentin Grimes, no steal. I want to take um, Kevin Durant, under 29 and a half points. So let's play. So, like, lines have been ripping towards Durant going under. I'm not sure. Maybe Beal's playing. Who knows? Who knows what's moving around the market? Oh, we want to take Quentin Grimes. To, to, to get a steal. I apologize. So I want to take his over here. We have Durant under. All the books have him heavily favored to go under, right? Pinnacle has ripped from minus 106 to minus 154. So I don't know. Maybe there's some injury news. Uh, I'm not sure. Who knows? But Durant probably expected to play less minutes. Who knows? And then we have Seth Jarvis under two and a half shots on goal. So it doesn't matter what sport you're betting on. You know, it's the same... It's the same strategy. So we want to go here and we want to take him under two and a half shots. And for some reason, this, they limited my last bet to 20 bucks. This they're letting me get, uh, they're letting me get a hundred bucks down on. So a hundred to win 600. Those picks are inactive. So they moved the play on Quentin Grimes, but they have these other two picks. So now I need a replacement pick. So again, Durant Jarvis, like, Heavily favored to go under. Underdog Fantasy will give us the same payout if we take Durant's over versus under. I'm not just betting random shit with my gut. I'm following the market data to find these plays that have a mathematical edge. So what we can do is let's look at BAM points plus rebounds plus assists. We obviously already have his under um, on parlay play, but if we go here to BAM, 34 and a half. I mean, this other book, the market is kind of just like, weird due to his injury news oftentimes that's when you see the best bets right injuries that 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 type of stuff like moves around the market so whatever we can go to xavier worthy under six receptions and now they only limit me to twenty dollars so maybe i beat them up too big on college football and they're only going to give me 20 on college football whatever but here are my three picks right durant under jarvis under worthy under three sharp picks on underdog so then we can check out prize picks again. And, you know, it's kind of more of the same. We have those esports plays. Nothing to talk about. So we can go back here, and we already have Fliff selected. So it's like, okay, let's refresh. Anything else on Fliff we want to jump on? We got these two good plays down. These are pretty low profit margin. Again, really the power of sports betting is, um, you know, like if you even have a 2% ROI – Let's say on your NBA bets, how many games are there in the regular season? You know, 80 or whatever. That's an 160% return, you know, 
over the course of a season. So if your bankroll is 2000 bucks, you know, 160% ROI, if you're betting every day, even with just a 2% ROI, your returns are daily. You can see there's some good arbitrage plays available as well. So arbitrage is when, whoa, damn, here's what we should have been on on BAM. It looks like it just showed up. BAM under 10 and a half rebounds. What? So this play looks like it'll probably show up here in a second. But arbitrage is when two books, right? All books set their own odds, right? So arbitrage is when two books get so out of sync. They have such different odds. You can bet the over on one book. In this case, you'd play the over on FanDuel, minus 120. DraftKings is super different. They have the over at minus 173. So you play the over on one book, the under on another book to guarantee a profit. You're hedging for a guaranteed profit. And then this calculator just tells you how much to bet on each side and what your risk-free profit will be. So again, like some people may have bigger bankrolls. You can hit this for 750. DraftKings hit it for 600. You make a risk-free $24 today. And again, this may seem like a lot to bet, even 250. You're betting 450 total, but this is risk-free money, a risk-free return of 2%. 2%, 60% a month if you're arbitrage betting every day, your bankroll grows super quickly. Even if you're only arbitrage betting with $1,000 on 3% plays every day, that's $30 a day, $900 risk-free to supplement your bankroll growth every single week, right? Or sorry, every month, 3% arbitrage bets, you're putting down 1,000 a day, 30 bucks risk-free, right? And it's risk-free money. I mean, where else can you get risk-free profits? So anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this video, um, live stream. We got down some good bets. Enjoy the game. Happy Black Friday. Uh, thanks so much for your time.